Introduction to the Junk Rig, Part 2. So what are the main characteristics of a junk rig? Well, first, it has some of the characteristics of a lug sail. That is, that the sail is attached at the top to a long spar which sits across the mast rather than butting up against it. You can see the spar, the yard, highlighted here in red. For this reason, the junk rig is sometimes known as the Chinese lug sail. But the junk rig is also fully battened. That is, there are wooden, metal or composite battens. Of course, in a traditional junk, these would have been bamboo that run all the way across the sail from the luff or front to the leech or back. You can see these shown here. And as you can see, these battens are spaced more or less equally from near the top of the sail to near the bottom. At the very bottom of the sail, there is a boom. So the sail is set out on a framework provided by the yard, the battens and the boom. A junk rig also has these special lines that run from the top of the mast down and under the boom. You can see these clearly here. These are often called lazy jacks, although properly they should be called the topping lift and sail gatherers, and they act as a sort of cradle for the boom, keeping it from being lowered below its proper level and keeping it more or less horizontal, even when the sail is lowered. These are quite important to the operation of the junk rig. Let's watch that in this model. As the sail is lowered, it folds down almost like a Roman blind, each panel of sail dropping with its batten into the cradle provided by the lazy jacks. The sheeting arrangements on a junk rig are also quite different from most modern sailing boats. You can see in this picture that there is a set of lines running to and from the sail to the deck. In fact, a line is fastened to the end of each batten and in turn attached to the larger line or sheet that controls the sail. Using this sheet, the sail is adjusted to suit the wind direction so as to give drive to the sail. You can see this again on our model. There is just one sheet line leading into the cockpit. That line runs through a block from somewhere near the stern of the boat up towards the sail where it gathers in a line running from two or more of the battens. Back to deck, back up again to gather in another couple of battens and so forth until all of the battens are connected via blocks to just one sheet. It looks complicated, but it's really not. And while there are many different sheeting arrangements for junk rig boats, most of them have this characteristic that the sail is attached at all or most of the batten ends to the sheet. This means that a single sheet is controlling the sail at several points, not just at the bottom of the sail. This combination of lazy jacks, battens and sheets that capture each batten separately is the secret of easy reefing on the junk rig. Reefing is when a sail is made smaller to capture less wind, and it's done when the wind is too strong or when one wants to slow the boat. Let's use the model to see the sail being lowered as before. But this time, let's stop halfway. The bottom three panels have been furled or folded down and the wind has much less of the sail to act upon. Now the sail is reefed. But the wind is still blowing hard on the sail, so why do the furled panels stay in one place? Well, this is where the lazy jacks and the sail gatherers come into play. The stiffness and weight of the battens combined with the cradling effect of the lazy jacks and the tension exerted on the back of the battens by the sheet act together to hold the reefed down sail panels in place while still allowing the upper panels to be under control of the rest of the sheet. In practice, it's even simpler than I've made it sound in the previous slide. Well, almost. Let's watch Glenn Maxwell, an experienced junk rig sailor, reefing his sail on the small boat Hedwig. Reefing drill, just to show you how easy it is to reef a junk rig. Uh, so uh, we're going to pretend like the wind is really coming up and it's time to tuck in a reef. So here we go. And that was it. 
and that sail was reefed or reduced by two panels in about 10 seconds. It's a small boat, of course, not much wind and possibly in a sheltered sailing area. What about a larger boat in more open water under some pressure from the wind? So here's another example, this time Chris Bray, an ocean cruiser who sailed up the coast of Alaska and into the Northwest Passage, among other places. You can see Chris first tighten up his lazy jacks to cradle the boom, then lower the sail to reef it. He finishes off with a couple of other minor adjustments. The wind is picking up a bit here, so it might be a good opportunity to show you about reefing on a junk rig sail. So first of all, you've got to tighten up these because they're going to hold basically the, the boom up uh, as we start to drop the sail, otherwise the whole thing will just fall onto the deck. So we snug them up tight first. Now literally all I need to do is, is let out the halyard, let the sail come down. And because you can see the way all the sheet ropes are attached there, uh, as the sail comes lower, it just folds up like a Venetian blind. And you don't need to go on deck and, and lash down the sail or anything like you do on a normal boat when you're reefing. It just, you can choose exactly how big you want the sail. Then you just have to tighten back up the sheet ropes. The yard haul parallel just pulls that, that top yard arm back tight up against towards the mast and it just tensions up the sail and makes it give you a nice shape again. And this one is the luff haul parallel. I've just got to tighten that one back up as well. So it's really very easy to reef a junk rig sail. That's one of the reasons we love it so much. You, know, you don't have to go on deck at all. You can choose exactly how big you want it. There's no reefing lines or any of that stuff. And it really is that simple. Although it's not a universal rule, most junk rig boats have unstayed masts. That is, their masts are not held in place by the kind of stays or shrouds, spreader bars and fore and back stays that are common on sailing boats. Instead, they have stout masks, as you can see here in the centre picture, generally thicker at the base than at the top. These masts don't sit on the deck, but run through the deck and are stepped or lodged onto the keel of the boat. This gives them great strength and allows the forces of the wind on the sail to be easily managed. The absence of shrouds on the side of the boat has an important advantage. It allows the boom to swing well out over the side of the boat, almost perpendicular to the line of the boat, in fact, when the wind is directly behind the boat. This allows the sail to gather the maximum possible wind to push it along. Chris Bray again. So running downwind like this is where the junk rig really comes into its own. Apart from the fact it's got a massive sail area, because uh, there's no stays, no rigging, you can actually let the sail out pretty much 90 degrees and fly along. Junk rig enthusiasts are an experimental bunch and many experiments have been made to improve the sailing performance of the rig. The little corabee in the top left has sailed from the south of England to the Netherlands and back, not the longest voyage for a junk rig corabee. It has its original flat cut sail based on the designs of Hasler and McLeod. That means that the sail itself is not an aerofoil shape and in order to sail to windward it must rely on the set of the sail and the sheeting to twist the sail in a way which generates an aerodynamic effect. The difficulty of this is one of the reasons that the junk rig has a reputation for not going to windward. While many still like flat cut sails for their simplicity and strength, Others prefer to put a curve shape or camber into their sails. The dory at the bottom left, which has crossed many oceans, now has so-called cambered panel sails. That is, a curve shape has been built into the each panel of the sail so that the sail presents an aerodynamic shape to the wind, aiding windward performance of the rig. The vessel in the middle is a wing sail junk rig another 100,000 miles plus vessel. In this case, the battens are wishboned around the mast at the forward end and the sail is wrapped around the mast. Being fully encompassed by the sail, the mast will produce much less wind drag and the sail will be more aerodynamically efficient. At the top right, the slit junk rig provides another approach to dealing with the drag of the mast and the manner in which more traditional junk sails are free to stand away from the mast on one tack but must lean against it on the other. By splitting the sail panels along the plane of the mast, some of these effects are avoided, and these sails are beautiful. The catamaran at the bottom right is an aero junk. An aero junk sail is cut flat, but the battens are curved and are in pairs either side of the mast. As a result, the flat sail takes up the curved shape of the battens on either tack, so presenting an aerodynamic curve to the wind.
but all of these sales, as experimental as they may be, retain some of the basic lessons learnt in East Asia over the centuries. Fully battened sails, easy reefing via lazy jacks or similar arrangements, sheeting to each batten, and so on. Thank you for attending this presentation on the junk rig. Further information and the fellowship of other junk rig enthusiasts are available on the Junk Rig Association website at www.junkrigassociation.org.